you got a yellow card. <laughs> yeah, Tiffany. My students would have... Wait a minute, Tiffany. Say Tiffany. you, Tiffany from... I'm Tiffany from Hawaii. Dario US. from... Portugal. Who got the yellow card, okay? <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany from the US. I, I actually appreciate Dario's question. My students would have a similar one, but I think I... Because it was disallowed, I'll rephrase it. <laughs> I'd say, um, my students would ask, why is there such a hubbub around the Higgs, whether it is or is not found? What is the importance of this boson? For you, what's the importance of... Why is there such a fuss about something uh, that you did a long time ago? What is the importance of this so-called Higgs boson? Well, to me, it's, it's the, uh, the the culmination of, of searches for all the particles associated with the so-called st standard model, and this is the last to be found, if, it, if indeed it has been found. <laughs> uh, and, um, well, uh, that's, the, as it were, the, the end of a, of a phase of theoretical physics, uh, particle physics, and the, and the beginning of the search for more interesting things. Uh, to me, uh, to me the, this, this particle is, is no longer very, very in interesting. After all, in, I've, I've no, known about its possible existence or, or maybe definite existence for years. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, it's the end of a, end of a phase of uh, particle physics. Okay, so the end of a phase of particle physics, yeah. Right, uh, Ian from Scotland. Basic point of view, uh, my students would ask, um, what does it do? You know, what is the Higgs as opposed to what, why is it important? What? What, does the, what, does the, what is it? What does it do? What is it useful for? I, I don't. I, I don't. I don't know. First of all, that to answer the, or not answer the last part. <laughs> I, 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 I don't know of any use for it except as a, as a route into what lies beyond the standard model. Um, I mean, what what it does as far as theory is concerned is um, it's one of the one of the, one of the things which which has to exist to save the theory from disaster um, <laughs> i mean the person who sh who showed showed that well one of the people was uh, chris Llewellyn smith former director general of cern who showed that if you want to control the high energy behavior of, of scattering amplitudes uh, of particles uh, to keep the keep the theory uh, consistent. That's the theory involving spin one uh, particles like W and Z. Then you you have to have such a particle. Otherwise, there's a disaster in the theory. Okay. Thank you. Another one. Yeah. You should say from Portugal. I'm not Mourinho. <laughs> Um, if uh, the Higgs boson is confirmed, what happens next? Mm -hmm. If the Higgs boson is confirmed, what happens next? Actually, I, I, can I rephrase that? Because I was going to ask that one. <laughs> <laughs> if, you were, if you had, and I'm sure you do, you meet young theoretical physicists, people embarking on a, on a career in physics, um, if the Higgs boson does exist, what direction would you be guiding them to follow now? Where would you feel that they would be best putting their efforts now? What would you say to them? <coughs> well, I mean, if it's, if it's a question about uh, particle physics alone, uh, then, then uh, I, I, I mean, I think the uh, next stage is well, the, the, the immediate next stage is going to be uh, studying more of the properties, quantitative features of, of this particle than, than we, we would know merely by saying it's there. Mm -hmm. And um, some of this will lead on into, uh, <coughs> into parts of, of, of more speculative theories uh, which connect with 
questions about gravity and cosmology and so on, and that, and that's, that is something I find interesting. That's something you personally find interesting. Okay, anybody else? Yeah? Uh, Sandy from England. How did you come up with the idea of the Higgs particle? How did you how did you come up with Sandy from the UK wants to know how did you come up with the idea of this particle you had this idea a long time ago so and I'm sure you've been asked this many many times but how did you come up with the idea well, well it was rather accidental uh, <laughs> but what what happened was in the early 60s starting from about 1960 <coughs> there, there was a proposal <coughs> from the Japanese-born American theorist <coughs> Yoichiro Nambu that uh, perhaps some of the symmetries, broken symmetries in particle physics were broken uh, not as a re result of symmetry breaking terms in the, in the Lagrangian of the theory but as a consequence of an asymmetric vacuum state that's, that's called spontaneously broken symmetry. Uh, uh, Nambu and others, uh, notably uh, Jeffrey Goldstone, uh, very soon discovered that when they wrote down any uh, model theory of this type, it predicted uh, some mass massless, spinless particles called Goldstone bosons. That was unacceptable because uh, such particles would, uh, would easily have been discovered and what's more, uh, they would be massless, spinless particles are very easily radiated. It would upset our knowledge about the energy balance and uh, you know any, how energy is emitted from stars. Um, so that was a, a setback for Nambu's program. And in 1964, um, several of us, and, uh, Robert Brout and François there in Brussels and, and myself uh, discovered some uh, theories in which this theorem did not apply. Uh, my part in it was to realize that the axioms which had been used to prove the theorem, which by then a lot of people believed was rigorously proved, that the axioms did not apply to, to a theory like with the well-known theory of quantum electrodynamics. Now, quantum electrodynamics doesn't have a, a spontaneous symmetry breaking in it, but it was the clue to how to evade this theorem. So uh, I immediately th thought I must write down the simplest uh, quantum field theory model which uh, shows how this happens. Now, what I did was essentially put together uh, a model of spontaneously broken symmetry due to Jeffrey Goldstone, and I, as it were, married that to uh, Maxwell electrodynamics. Uh, the immediate consequence that I saw was that the uh, spin one particle in that model, which would otherwise be Mac the photon of the Maxwell <coughs> electrodynamics, became a massive spin one particle. So that was the first good thing. Uh, so anyway, I, I, I wrote a short paper, sent it to the journal Physics Letters, of, of which the edit, relevant editor was actually here in CERN, and it was rejected. <laughs> <laughs> so then I thought, they, these people, you know, I, th I think I think the referee was somebody else <coughs> along the corridor, the, the th theory corridor. <laughs> <laughs> One of your friends. <laughs> uh, anyway, I, I I I thought that they don't, they don't under, understand what 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 I'm doing. This 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 does have some importance for physics. Uh, so I, I thought, what do I? What else do I have to say to to make my point? And one of the things I, I said was in theories of this type, in other words, spontaneous symmetry breaking combined with uh, gauge fields, which have been essentially Maxwell type fields, uh, there's always a left, uh, some left, there are always some leftover 
particles of spin zero which do have mass. And, and that was what's now called the Higgs boson. Mm -hmm. uh, but it's not, there's nothing new about it because uh, the, the, that particular particle uh, exists in, in really a lot of theories of that type. In fact, the, uh, in the theory of superconductivity, from which these models were, uh, well, they were they inspired Nambu's work, the, the theory of some superconductivity in, in the 1950s. Um, superconductors have a, an excitation of this type, and, and already in 1980, uh, such a, an excitation was observed in a niobium selenium superconductor by Raman spectroscopy. So the solid state counterpart of, of the so-called Higgs boson is already known since th more than 30 years ago. Okay, thank you. Um, <coughs> sorry, Peter, you missed it to say that when you submitted the second paper, you sent it actually to Fizz Revelet as in yes, the United that's right. States. <laughs> yes, and yes, it was accepted. Yes, <laughs> when, when it went across the Atlantic, it was accepted. <laughs> and, uh, and um, well, first of all, the referee pointed out that there was work by uh, Braut and Onglair from Brussels, that, that just pu published in the same journal, that I hadn't known about. And, um, uh, anyway, uh, w later on, I met Nambu, and he confessed that he'd been the referee. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, I'm going to have to stop us here, because we're going to go shortly, and I'd like to have a photograph with everybody. There are just a couple of questions I'd like to ask on, on everybody's behalf. One is, it's been a long, long, long wait. Has, did you ever expect to be sitting at CERN? here, uh, and how was it, this long wait? Are you excited uh, by what may or may not be happening? <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, uh, yes, uh, of course I'm, uh, I'm, 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 I'm let, let me Let me say that, uh, first of all, that, that um, I, I've, I've spent the last week at, at a summer school in Sicily, at Erice, and uh, I went to that summer school convinced that the analysis of the data would not have reached the sort of crucial point of statistical significance uh, by tomorrow. Uh, so I, I thought I was going straight back to Edinburgh after the summer school mm -hmm. ended on Monday, Monday morning. Uh, during the previous few days, I was persuaded that I should come here and <laughs> <laughs> um, We're all wondering actually why they actually invited you to come here. Well, I, <laughs> I mean, it may, it may be all a joke. <laughs> <laughs> but um, then did, did, I did I expect this sort of thing? Well, over, uh, at the beginning, uh, I mean, it's the, the t time lag between my papers in 1964 and t today is um, uh, pretty much 48 years. So at the beginning, it, I had no idea whether uh, that, uh, that, that comment of mine it, drawing attention to this particle in the theory, uh, w whether, whether it would be confirmed experimentally, experimentally in my lifetime even. It, it took a, a very long time for the, first of all, for, for the, uh, the th theory to develop in such a way that the, the community of particle theorists believed it, uh, the crucial thing being uh, uh, the, the work of Feldman and Tuft around 1970. Um, uh, and before that, of course, the, um, the, there was the work of uh, Weinberg and Salam who put together essentially the kind of model that, that I'd formulated uh, together with a previous uh, th theory in which, which, which was about electroweak unification and symmetry breaking by Glashow. So all these things had to happen before theorists took it seriously around 1972. 
that there then had to be a period in which uh, experimentalists verified, as they did, that the uh, theory of uh, Glashow and Weinberg and Salam mm -hmm. w was probably the right electroweak theory, and that came in the uh, early 70s. And then, then came, came the planning of LEP, and the crucial thing which began to uh, draw experimentalists' attention uh, to this particle was a paper written here in CERN by John Ellis, Mary Kay Gaillard, and Dmitry Nanopoulos, uh, called The Phenomenology of the Higgs Boson. And at the, the end of that paper, the, the final paragraph is quite interesting because basically, to paraphrase, it says, uh, we, we, apo we apologize that, that, that we really can't tell you for sure anything much about this particle. <laughs> uh, and we don't want to encourage uh, big experimental searches for it, <laughs> but we feel that uh, experimentalists working in this field ought to be aware of it and, as it were, keep their, keep their eyes open for any signs. <laughs> OK, thank you. Uh, <coughs> Professor Higgs, I don't think I'm exaggerating uh, when I say that uh, for nearly everybody in this room, this is a dream come true. Is coming to CERN this week, for you, a dream come true? Uh, well, I suppose, <laughs> it, I suppose it is, in a way, yes. It's, it's, um, Yes, it's the, it's the end, end of a phase as far as my life is con concerned. I, I can now go home and, and drop dead with a good conscience. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I think that's a, not, a good time to, <laughs> not a good time to close on, but what would be a good note to close on is that uh, we thank you very much for coming. Uh, we thank you for sharing these thoughts with us. Um, we hope that... Uh, there will be a very interesting announcement <laughs> tomorrow and uh, we wish that you have a, a long uh, life ahead of you to enjoy whatever happens tomorrow. So, <laughs> thank you. stand here and we gather round and uh, we just take a couple of photographs and then okay <laughs> tall people at the back uh, yeah. Yeah, little guys at the front You're being classified. Yeah. Thanks so much for coming. Yeah. We're so happy to have you. Sit. You want to sit? Oh, sorry. There you go. Come on, guys. Give me one camera. Right. Yes, you do. One camera. <laughs> Come on, Brian. Everybody in the photograph. All the teachers, please. All teachers. We can take photographs. <laughs> this time we can say with feeling. Ready? Peace! <laughs> Okay, guys, thank you very much.